Hello, welcome to Health Talk. I'm Dr. Manny. Everyone knows that making healthy choices can lead to a healthier life. But what about riskier choices? My guest today says more success comes from risk. Joining me now is Kate Sukul, author of Art of Risk, The New Science of Courage, Caution, and Chance. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Fascinating book, The Art of Risk. I like the, the, I like the, uh, the title. So how do we balance risk-taking with healthier let's say, outcomes, lifestyle, things. Right. Well, what neuroscientists are learning is that risk is really important to learning and skill building. So while we talk about it as if it's always a bad thing, you know, risk is the thing that's going to lead to danger, injury, death, you know, uh, bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the order that I should put them in, but, you right. know, you know, all the bad things in life. And yet, risk is really what you need to do in order to build your skills. If you never try the harder thing. If you never push yourself to the edge, you're never going to get any better at so anything. It's, it's another definition of challenge, if you don't yeah. challenge yourself. But in your book, you get into, you know, what is, uh, how risky is risky? I mean, how, right. what are we talking about? Uh, well, it's going to really vary from person to person. Some people like a lot more stimulation. And so they may be the type of people that want to jump out of planes or run Ironmans or really push themselves to the limit. And for some people, do you know, the healthy risk is going to be, you know, knitting with the expensive yarn, right. going for the cashmere. Yeah, giving up beer. <laughs> exactly, you know, something like that. <laughs> risky. Or whether or not to have that third cup of coffee in the morning. Right. But, but, but what you're saying in your book philosophically and practically is that you have to make certain choices if you want to get to an endpoint right. to make a difference in a healthier uh, yeah. style. I mean, we've really made risk into a dirty word. It's right. something to be avoided at all costs. And yet it really is important yeah. if you want to make any changes in your life, especially positive ones, you know, you have to take those risks. So often we talk about risk in terms of danger, but the other side of that coin is opportunity. And so that's whether we want to lose 10 pounds, quit smoking, or just learn a really valuable new skill, we really do need to push ourselves. All right, so uh, let's talk about some specific things. Sure. Uh, weight loss. Yes. Uh, what are some of the changes that I have to make and how can I use risk to help me get there? Sure. So I think obviously weight loss, you know, it's a lifestyle change. It's a matter of changing diet and, and changing your exercise plan. So I think mm -hmm. where risk can come in, try something new, right? Everybody wants to get on the treadmill or just reduce carbs. Well, what if you try different kinds of food? Maybe you could have, uh, you know, less meat, less carb diet if you tried new foods that you hadn't tried before. Maybe to really get you excited about going to work out every day, you need to take an aerial yoga class or Pilates or try something a little bit different. Get out of your comfort zone. Try new things. Find different ways to introduce those, those lifestyle changes so they're not stead and boring and a hardship. Because that's yeah. the hardest part of it, right? Stick into the same boring thing all the time. I, I, I can get that. All right. Two, two ticket items which sometimes go hand in hand. One is smoking, the other drinking. Right. Uh, give me some advice how I can get into, you know, quit smoking, reduce drinking, but take some risk to incorporate it in my decision making? Well, a lot of times we end up falling back on these kind of crutches because we don't have enough other motivation and joy in our lives. So where risk taking can come in there is find new avenues where you aren't smoking and drinking as much. Find something to replace that behavior that motivates you, excites you, and gets you out there trying new things. And so maybe it's you know, taking that trip and you say, okay, I'm going to quit smoking right now. And for every, I don't even know what cigarettes are a pack now. It's something ridiculous, like, like $7 a, a pack, pack something. something like that. But for, you know, just think of all the money that you could save each week towards that dream vacation you always wanted to take. In terms of drinking, same thing. What could you do to replace that behavior? What could bring you the, a similar relaxation or a similar sort of, I don't want to say high because that's a loaded word, but you know, yeah. something that, that's enjoyable right. so that you can replace it with. And a lot of that comes into trying new things and opening up your horizons. I, listen, I, I think you're, you're, you're hitting, the, especially the, the psychological concept right on the head. You need to, uh, in order to get to that point B, you need to do something about that. Um, one thing that everybody always, I guess, wants to get more or get better at, uh, better sex. Well, and you know what? It, now, that's going to be, I don't want to take any risk there. <laughs> Why Unless not? you're married or something. But. Well, okay. So I'm not, right, so, I'm not so, suggesting so, so better sex. How do I use risk taking and improve my sex life? 
Well, here's the interesting thing. When you look at studies of successful aging, you see all these things. You know, you see people tend to exercise more. They have a healthier diet. They tend to be intellectually engaged. They have lots of social connections, and they have more sex. Mm. So there's a chicken and egg problem, right? It's a correlational study. Are they doing these things because they feel better, or do they feel better because they're doing these things? <laughs> But it's a win-win as far as I'm concerned. Try doing those things anyway, and then hopefully, if nothing else, you end up with a great story at the nursing home. Right. But in terms of opening up for sex, talk to your partner. What could you do to sort of bring that spark back? Mm. Have fun date nights where you're trying new things and you're not just always going to the same restaurant, going to see the same kind of movies, and then going back home and talking about what the kids are doing or not doing. Right, right, right. Just find ways to embrace new novelty, communicate, and figure out what the other partner needs, and that's going to improve sex. But in that particular scenario, uh, as compared to, let's say, the smoking or the eating or whatever, mm -hmm. you, you, you need your partner also to incorporate in risk-taking. You do. You, they have to be open to... Which, yeah. yeah, which brings me to the last question. Right. How do I become better at using risk or become a riskier person to change my life if I, I don't have those skills. The thing is, I think we all want to say that risk taking is a personality trait, right? It's something that he does or she does. That's not me. I'm risk averse. But the interesting thing in writing The Art of Risk, I interviewed all of these high profile risk takers. They all said, I'm really not a risk taker. And you say, wait a minute, you jump out of planes or you jump off cliffs or you, you know, stage enemy incursions. Right. And they're like, well, okay, I don't take unnecessary risks. The thing is, risk taking is not a personality trait. It is a decision making process. It is literally part and parcel of every decision you'll make every day. And so once you start thinking about it that way and not thinking about it in such extremes, you realize these little things, these little changes add up to really big differences. They add up to very different lives lived. And that is really important. So it's not the big thing. You don't have to go jump out of planes or right. get some weird sex chair in your house. You can just start little and build your way up. And you'll find that embracing that uncertainty and taking those risks really does end up in a large positive outcome for everyone involved. All right. Well, thank you so much. Where can people get more information? It's a great book. You can find uh, The Art of Risk wherever books are sold. You can find me on Twitter as at Kate Sukel, K-A-Y-T-S-U-K-E-L. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And if you have any health questions, tweet me at Dr. Manny on Fox. Until next time, I'm Dr. Manny.